Good evening. Welcome to the wonderful world of Willy Wonka. We are delighted to have you here. We're thrilled, actually, to have you join us today as we embark on this magical journey through the whimsical world of chocolate and candy and pure imagination. My name is Marianne Foltz, and I'm the Fine Arts Director here at South Lake Christian, and I'm also privileged to be the director of this year's musical, and last year's in the year before and the year before. Um, but I'm thrilled to be working with these kids. They have worked so hard. We've been on working on this show since November, and it's, it's magical. Oh, I don't want to get choked up. My goodness gracious. Um, We've been working tirelessly to bring you this beloved story to life, and we couldn't be more excited to share it with all of you. From the enchanting chocolate room to the mysterious Oompa Loompas, get ready to be transported to a place where dreams come true and anything is possible. Before we go there, though, we got a few mundane housekeeping items. We do have some spiraling lights and sound effects today and a couple of other magical things, so just be aware that there might be a shift in that. Um, the bathrooms are directly out that hallway. You, you pass them. I would ask that you please don't use the restrooms during the show unless you absolutely have to. I know I have a lot of my students here, boys and girls, hold it if you can. Um, sometimes you can't, but if you can, it would be good because it's really distracting to have the doors open and the lights come through. If you do need to use it because life happens, can you not go through the center? Don't go there because you're going to hit the orchestra. Um, and if you cannot use the center one, that would be good because that's our live streaming camera. And it'll go like this. And that kind of really spoils, mm, makes people sick. So go through that back one over there, please. Um, cell phones are, are a joy and a trouble. Could you please take yours now and I'd prefer it if you would t turn it off, but if you cannot turn it off or you, you choose not to, that's certainly your choice. Would you please at least put it on airplane mode? Please don't be that person that, whose phone goes off in the middle of the show. And while you're at it, I'm checking my watch. Please make your watch be on silent as well. Uh, we have a lot, we have 22 mics back there, and I just don't want to take the risk of a interference. Um, no filming of the show, please. You may take some Pictures, please no flash photography because that is very distracting. Um, but you may take pictures. Please do not film the show. It is against our contract with MTI, and I will get in trouble, and I don't want that. I would like to extend a heartfelt thank you to everyone who has contributed, contributed to make this production possible. Our talented cast, our dedicated crews, our su incredibly supportive parents, and of course, you, our wonderful audience. Thank you for being a part of this, and thank you for supporting the fine arts here at South Lake Christian. And now, sit back, relax, and then prepare to be dazzled by the magic of Willy Wonka. And you'll be in a world of pure imagination. Take a look and you'll see into my imagination. We'll begin with a spin, traveling in a world of my creation. What we'll see will defy explanation. If you want to view paradise, simply look around and view it. Anything you want to do it, want to change the world, there's nothing to it. There is no place I know to compare with pure imagination. Living there, you'll be free if you truly wish to be. I am 
Willy Wonka. In the course of my long and spectacular career, I have created over 200 sensational and original new candy bars, each one with a different center, and each one sweeter and creamier and more delicious than the one before. I can create chewing gum that never loses its taste, and rich caramels that change color every 10 seconds as they dissolve delectably in your mouth. I have also created the biggest and best candy empire the world has ever known. But I have no one to leave it to. No one to replace me. No one to make new candy dreams come true when I retire. And the time for me to retire is, alas, already long overdue. Please gather together all the Oompa Loompas. I have an important announcement to make. Once upon a chocolate time, long, long chocolate time ago, the golden age of chocolate began. I know cause I was there. When it comes to chocolate, he's a many flavors. Cause that's the age of chocolate event With hopes of smile and flair The golden age of chocolate Has lasted all these years The golden stage of chocolate That every child reveres But soon I'll be retiring To make way for someone new Some bright spark I'll be hiring But who? Whatever your opinion is about me The chocolate world could not survive without me There'll be no more chocolate ripples, chocolate triples Chocolate ruffles, chocolate truffles Chocolate kisses for you young misses Soft and creamy, completely dreamy Or chocolate ices, cause chocolate crisis Will grow and grow and grow The day that I retire, I know The golden age of chocolate has lasted all these years The golden stage of chocolate that every child reveres There's a golden age of chocolate history we must write somehow For the golden age of chocolate to make life sweeter now These two very old people are the father and mother of Mr. Bucket. And these two very old people on the other side of the bed are the father and mother of Mrs. Bucket. This is Mr. Bucket, and this is Mrs. Bucket. And that young boy there is Charlie Bucket, their only son. Here you go, Grandpa Joe, cabbage soup. Every day, nothing but cabbage soup. Cheer me up, Charlie. Tell me, what's the chocolate news? Blanca's got a new bar out. 
Fudgeable or mellow base? Mellow with flavor shifters. Flavor shifters? My. And hi to you too. Been lying across from you in this bed for 17 years, and now you suddenly decide to say hi? George, she didn't say hi. She said flavor shifters. My, my! Who's wearing a tie? What do you mean, why? I don't know why. She didn't say a high, tie, or why. She said flavor shifters. My, my! Sure, I'd love a slice of pie. Nobody's having pie, Dad. Just cabbage soup, as always. Aww. Papa? How many toothpaste caps do you reckon you've twisted into place at the toothpaste factory in your life? As of last night, Charlie, my career total stands at 4,249,876. That must be a world record! Close. Well, I'd like some toast. Nobody is having toast! <laughs> Thank you, Charlie. Do you think one day I might be able to get a job at the toothpaste factory, Papa? For your sake, I hope not, Charlie. <coughs> What kind of positive thinking is that? Charlie's gonna work for Mr. Wonka making chocolate bars. Now, Grandpa Joe, don't go filling the boy's head with dreams of candy. Brandy? I'd love one. He's just a kid. Why would you give him brandy? She said candy! I know! She's gonna give the kid brandy! Candy! What? Candy! candy. All right, all right. I'm not deaf, you know. Yeah, sure. <laughs> You gotta remember that Charlie's descended from a long line of distinguished candy men. And women. But Wonka hasn't hired anyone since Slugger's spy stole his candy balloon recipe. Wonka was so angry, he gathered up all the workers together and told them, I'm sorry, but you all must go home. Then he locked the gates of the factory forever. But Mr. Wonka still makes candies. I can smell them on my way to school. Yes, but no one comes in and no one comes out. Shadow workers. Maybe the undead. Who knows? Grandpa Joe, you're going to give Charlie nightmares again. Charlie wants to play gin? Word. Playing gin? Why I'm then? In. Charlie, run out and see if anyone's done with today's newspaper. Okay, Dad. But you'll have to feed Grandpa George. Here you are, Pop. Cabbage soup. Well, I thought we were playing gin. See these kids? They wait outside Charlie's house every day after lunch with a shiny nickel apiece to buy a Wonka bar from the local candy man. The only child with no nickel is Charlie. Come on, Charlie, don't you want some candy? Uh, not today, I'm uh, on a special diet. It's working. Come on, help me pick something out. I got a nickel. You've already got a lollipop. Shouldn't you finish it first? I just can't help it. I love candy. Chocolates, caramel, jar pickers, suckers, anything. Stop it. You're making my mouth water. I can't stop eating sweets. All oh, those wonderful Willy Wonka treats. You can't keep the others. Because me, I'm a wonka -er. When it comes to candy, Willie's the conqueror. The conqueror. Wait, is that the candy man? It's the candy man. Oh my goodness, look! <laughs> Who can take the sunrise, sprinkle it with dew, cover it in chocolate and a miracle or two? The candy man. The candy man can. Who can take a rainbow, wrap it in a sigh, soak it in the sun and make a strawberry lemon pie? The candy man. The candy man. The candy man can. The candy man can. The candy man can, cause he mixes it with love and makes the world taste good. The candy man makes everything he makes satisfying and delicious. Talk about your childhood wishes. You can even eat the dish. 
dishes. And nothing for you, Charlie? Uh, not today, thanks. I don't want to spoil my appetite. It looks like your appetite could use a little spoiling. Here, have one of these on the house. Really? Thanks. Who can take tomorrow? <laughs> Dip it in a dream. Love that makes the world taste good. Thanks for the candy. Oh, yeah, and my dad wants to know if you've got a newspaper we can borrow. Sure, I'm afraid it's yesterday's paper, but here you go. What's the world coming to? Our family can't even afford a paper. Thanks, see ya. And the world tastes good cause the candy man thinks it should. Paper, Dad. Well, I'll be a chocolate crispy. Will you look at this? Wonka factory to be open to a lucky few. Do you mean people are actually going to be allowed inside the factory? Read what it says. Mr. Willy Wonka has decided to allow five children to visit his world famous chocolate factory. The lucky five will tour the factory and receive a lifetime supply of Wonka chocolate. Tour the factory? A lifetime supply of chocolate? Read, Read on! on! Five golden tickets have been hidden among 50 million ordinary candy bars. That's a 10 million to one shot. Wow, I don't like the odds. The finders of these golden tickets will win the tour and the chocolate. What are you all talking about? Wonka is having a contest. Why would he want a screen test? A, a contest. contest! Who is? Wonka! Well, what about him? He's having a contest! All right, all right, I'm not deaf, you know. Those golden tickets oh. could be anywhere. How exciting! I wonder if any of them have been found yet. That paper's a day old. Charlie, can you imagine winning? Touring the factory? Meeting Mr. Wonka? Seeing for yourself all those undead zombie workers! Eating a lifetime supply of chocolate. Eating a lifetime supply of chocolate. One o'clock already? Charlie, you'd better hurry. You'll be late for school. Well, it's back to the twists and turns of toothpaste caps for me. Goodbye, Mr. Bucket. Goodbye, Mrs. Bucket. Charlie, come here. Remember, we may be starving. Starving. We may be poor. Poor the church mice. But the Bucket family always thinks positive. positive. Charlie, Psst. Charlie. Yes, Grandpa George? Come here, come on over here. Okay, Grandpa George, what is it? Charlie, remember, we may be starving. Yes, Grandpa George. We may be poor. We've already said that. But the Bucket family always, always thinks positive. I know, Grandpa George, I know. How do you know I was going to say that? <laughs> Write it down in purple ink, Charlie. If it's in purple ink, you'll never forget. That's positive. <laughs> so Mr. Bucket went back to the toothpaste factory while little Charlie Bucket was off at school. But on the way, Charlie heard some exciting news. Did you hear? Some kid found the first golden ticket. Already? Where? Today, look. This is Phineas Trout reporting live from Frankfurt, Germany, where worldwide Wonka mania has sales topping 25,000 bars every hour. We're live on the scene where the first golden ticket has been found. Here's the winning family now, Mrs. Poop, Mrs. Poop, 
May we have a word? Der Name ist Gloop mit ein G und ein L und ein O und another O und ein P. G L O O P. Und dies ist mein kleiner Liebchen Augustus. Tell us about the ticket. Oh ja, yeah. I just knew my little sausage sausage would find those golden tickets. It's so much candy bandy that it was almost impossible for him not to find one. Impossible, sure. Yeah. So Augustus, tell the folks at home something about you. What do you do? Favorite subjects? Any hobbies? Yeah, food. Augustus eats food. Lots and lots of food, sure. Yeah. Eating is his hobby. He's devoted to it. My God, is he devoted. Critics may say Augustus is a questionable role model for young people, given the alarming rise in childhood obesity. So he's a little fat. What's so wrong with that? It's better than being some sort of hooligan shooting off the guns and raising the havoc. Isn't it, my little piggly wiggly? Jawohl, Mommy, did it. Jawohl. And what I always say. Don't I always say, say it with me, my little liebchen, say it with me. Eat more, eat more, eat more, eat more. Good boy, good boy, Augustus. Say it again. Eat more. Good boy, Augustus. We've been training him for this day ever since our little smudgy pudgy was born. Training? Oh, yeah. For the younger to eat as much as Augustus, he has to be in training from morning to night, eating all kinds of the foods. If it was the Olympics, Augustus would have the gold medals. We give him fruit juice for breakfast, plus melons and mangoes and cereals, bananas and cream. Then fried egg meat bake and tomatoes with mushrooms and bread rolls and buns by the rim. And coffee and toast fed meat, butter and marmalade, sweet meats and nitrits galore. And what does Augustus do when breakfast through? I eat more, I eat more. He has bratwurst for lunch and this size of untruncheon, meat pasta and poire gras and soup. Then lamb chop and suckling, pig duckling and chicken and banquet befitting a group. The luncheon begins shop at 12.45 and then ends about quarter past four. Then what does Augustus do when luncheon's through? I eat more, I eat more. Between meals, the cooks feed me all kinds of goodies like chocolates and puddings and snacks. You must understand, young Augustus is so highly strong, eating helps him relax. Mom has run up a cent in his sacks. I make certain there's nothing he lacks. Then dinner. Of course, this is meal of the day when Augustus comes right off his diet. It's hamburgers, hot dogs, and ten tons of French fries. Would if I want more, they supply it. Augustus keeps eating and eating and eating until his starches are pure. And then, when he's finally back on his feet, can the kid even get through the door? Nine. And that's why Augustus has lived in the dining room right from the day he was born. So what does the poor little lad do all night to prevent my becoming a bore? I eat more, I eat more, I eat more, I eat more, I eat more. Ladies and gentlemen, this just in a second golden ticket has been found, this time on the other side of the world. We're off to our live remote in Sao Paulo, Brazil, where the world is suddenly sweet for Miss Veronica Salt. It's Veruca, you imbecile. Veruca, Veruca, Veruca. 
So, Mr. Salt, I understand you sweetened Veronica's chances with a little assistance. I said Veruca, you moron. Yes, I did, because my daughter Veruca here is a very special girl, very special. When she said she simply had to have one of them there golden tickets, see, we went nuts buying Wonka bars by the hundreds. By the thousands, Daddy, by the tens of thousands. You're right, baby. I must have bought hundreds of thousands of Wonka bars. Me, I'm in the nut business. Peanuts, cashews, brazils, macadamias. If it's nuts you want, I got them. Roasted, raw, plain, or fancy. Folks go nuts for our nuts. Check us out at www.wearenuts.com. They want to know about me, Daddy. They want to know about my ticket, not your macadamias. Right you are, dear. Right you are. Calls at 1 800 Weird Nuts, major credit card success. The ticket, Mr. Salt. Right. So I bought hundreds of thousands of Wonka bars and had my factory girlies stop selling nuts and start selling wrappers. And how many wrappers did Veronica shell? None, you pea brain. Veruca doesn't do manual labor. I have people for that. And my father will have you fired for mispronouncing my name. Won't you, Daddy? Whatever you want, Pigeon. Whatever you want. Anyways, after days of shelling chocolate, one of my factory girlies finally found the lousy golden ticket. I rewarded her by letting her take the lucky piece of chocolate home to her 17 kids. I didn't have the heart not to, you know what I mean? How philanthropic. Daddy, now she's being sarcastic. I want her fired, you hear me? Fired, this fired, fired! This is Phineas Trout, where it seems the sweet is rapidly turning sour. With nuts, don't forget the nuts. Seems you can't have the chocolate without the nuts. Good luck, Veronica. It's Veruca! So, after just one day, there are only three golden tickets left. Stay tuned for continuous coverage of this extraordinary contest. Let's hope that just one deserving kid is among the five. Trout, out. What's going on? Why aren't you guys going to school? School's canceled. Everyone's gone wonka crazy. A new shipment just arrived from the factory. We want to be the first in lines. Come on. That's okay. You, you guys go on without me. See ya. I'm going to be first in line. Not if I can help it. Race you there. at work. Did they close the factory early? That's an understatement, Charlie. They closed it forever. I'm out of a job. Out of a job? Yep. The factory's moving overseas. It's gonna be fully automated. Toothpaste cap twisting is the only profession I know. Because you don't need cap twisters when you got robot gizmos. Don't worry about it, Dad. You never liked that job anyway. Maybe now you can get back into the candy business, like Grandpa Joe keeps saying. Grandpa Joe likes to dream big dreams, Charlie. But I'm afraid big dreams aren't going to put food on the table. I don't know how I'm going to tell your mother, Charlie. Things were hard enough when I had a job, but now... I said don't worry about it, Dad. Just think positive. Positive? Why? Why not? Nothing to lose, so why not choose to think positive? Whenever my luck is on the blink, I think positive. Whenever I'm feeling down and out and don't know what to do, I never give way to fear and doubt, cause thinking positive sees me through. Stars are out of sync, I think positive. I write my thoughts down in purple ink and think positive. Remember this song when things go wrong, then you'll know what to do. In no time, you'll be thinking positive too. Come on, Papa, sing with me. Whenever I think. Drink, I think positive, not negative. Whenever my luck goes down the sink, I think positive. That's more like it. 
Whenever I'm feeling low or lost, just take a tip from me. You're wasting your time to count the cost. Just thinking positive, that comes free. Right. Positive is the way to be. Whenever I'm teetering on the brink, I think positive. The moment I do, I'm in the pink, thinking positive. Remember this song when things go wrong Then you'll know what to do In no time you'll be thinking positive too Charlie, I haven't had this much fun since the factory manager got his tongue caught in the conveyor belt Now let's go home I'm positive we're having something special for dinner Leftover cabbage soup? No, fresh cabbage soup Now that's positive <laughs> Remember this song when things go wrong Then you'll know what to do In no time you'll be thinking positive too Positive The Bucket family went about morning until night with a terrible rumbling in their tummies. Charlie felt it worst of all, but once a year he got a very special treat. Hi, everybody. I'm Surprise! Happy, Happy birthday, birthday, Charlie! Charlie. <laughs> Surprise! Happy birthday, Charlie. We already said that. We did? When? Yeah. Give him his present. Yes, he's very pleasant. Present, present, present. Here you go, my love. It's from all of us. Go on, boy. Open it. <gasps> it's a Wonka's Whipple Scrumptious Fudge Miller Delight. The best of them all, real Whipple. Carefully whipped at 2,700 RPMs for precisely 62.3 seconds. Grandpa, please. I thought we agreed to get him the netherific. The fudge mallow's the best and you know it. Not horrific. Fudge mallow. Not horrific, not horrific, not horrific. And I think he's terrific too. Happy birthday, Charlie. Mom and Dad, it's Charlie's day. Go ahead, Charlie. Open it up. Yeah, show us what thinking positive's all about. Now don't be too disappointed, my darling, if you don't find what you're looking for. The thing to remember is that whatever happens, you will still have the bar of candy. I thought we were going to get him a bar of candy. We did. That's what I just said. Bar of candy! Sure, I'd love a jar of brandy. Yes, I would. She said he still has the bar of candy. Who's got a bar of candy? Charlie! Well, why don't you just say so? Go on, Charlie, open it. Yeah, open the bar up. Who knows? Maybe our luck has finally changed. Okay. Here goes. For goodness sake, open it, boy. Please open it. You're making me jumpy. You're always grumpy. That woman was born grumpy, but I love her just the same. Hey, Charlie, open up that bar and see if you've won. That's that. Who wants a piece? We wouldn't dream of it, Charlie. Come on, Dad. You deserve something special after losing your job. What? what? It's not true. Charlie, that's not funny. Tell me it's not true. We'll starve! It is true. And we'll not starve. Then what kind of party is this? Hey, let's splurge a little. Put on the radio. Mr. Bucket's right. What's a little more electricity? Charlie, plug in the radio. Wow, really? This is the best birthday ever. We interrupt the Orphan Annie Radio Hour to bring you this important news flash. In the past hour, a third golden ticket has been found in Snellville, Georgia. <laughs>
What's your name, young lady? Violet. Violet Beauregard. Violet, quit chewing your gum so loudly. It's not ladylock. Not ladylock at all. Remember what your therapist said about acting out. She said it Oh, I can't, it, Ma. You flap your jaws even more than I do. <gasps> now, Violet, I do not appreciate that sort of language. Watch your words. Ask me nicely. <sighs> no problem. Hey, Ma. Would you please? Karen, I'm being interviewed here. Now tell us, Violet, how did you find your golden ticket? Normally, I'm a gum chewer. In fact, I adore gum. Love it, love it, love it. I chew gum all day long, except when I'm eating. Then I take the gum out of my mouth and put it behind my ear like this. She thought of that all herself. She's so clever. Ma, cool it. And when I sleep, I put it on my headboard. So in the morning, all I have to do is pop it back into my mouth and start chewing again. She thought of that too. So clever! Sometimes it's a little hard to get started. One time it got in my hair. But Ma cut it out and I went right on chewing it. It was a very moment though. <laughs> very witty, Violet. Now tell us about the golden ticket. Okay, keep your pants on, Phineas. I'm getting to it. So, like I said, I'm a gum chewer normally, but when I heard about Wonka's contest, I laid off the gum and switched straight to candy bars. That's how I found my ticket. Now, of course, I'm right back in the gum. In fact, I've been working on this piece for over three months solid. I've beaten the record set by my best friend, Cornelia Prinsmiddle. Hi, Cornelia. Listen to this. That's the sound of you listening. Listen some more. Do you want that, Prince, <gasps> Prince Middle? Oh, hey! I can't even see right now. Ladies and gentlemen, Wonka Bar sales have skyrocketed up to over 200,000 an hour. And this just in the fourth golden ticket has also been located in Television City, California. <laughs> Leaving only the fifth and final ticket to be found, we're live in the home of Mike TV, lucky golden ticket winner number four. Tell us about finding the golden ticket, ma'am. Well, Mike and I were... How could you chat, Ma? Did I tell you never to interrupt? This is the best part. Crack, smack, whack, dead. Did you think I'd die? That was totally awesome. So we gather, Mike. Now, Miss TV, about the golden ticket. So, Mike. Zippy, this next show's the suicide bomb, dude. Wait a minute. Freeze frame. It's my cell phone. Talk to me. Hold on. Got another call. Talk to me. Mike, would you mind to tell our audience about how you dude. found... Can't you see I'm busy running an empire here? Gotta go. I'll catch you later. Okay, Oprah. What do you want? Mike, I'd like you to tell our audience how it feels Hold the to phone, you check it out. I love the show. Wait, wait, do you play Wii? I'm the best, dude. The best. Mike has certain focus issues. So I see. Now, Mike, would you mind telling us about the golden ticket? Yeah. Okay, well, I guess I got the big shiny ticket dog. Big deal! Means giving up half a day of my favorite shows to tour some stupid chocolate factory, which probably has crappy cell reception. Forgive me, Oprah, baby. Gotta change the channel. Dude, check her out! Now, which school does our latest golden ticket winner attend? A school? Are, are you joking? Or just crazy? Who needs school? I've got the net, TV, and my Game Boy fool. Some kids like electric trains, and some kids like to use the brains to earn a university degree. I don't share their thirst for knowledge, I don't need to go to college, me, I see it all on TV. Some kids like to sing and dance, and some kids go to Paris, France, while others visit Washington, D.C. I don't learn a single thing, cause I can download anything, it's all on my computer for free. Some kids go to baseball games while other kids have useless names like ten days at a boys' scout jamboree. Well, wimpy kids read books of verse. I play destroy the universe. No one has Nintendo games like me. 
Some kids like to fly balloons or play the latest top ten tunes while others wanna surf in Waikiki. I could visit London Road and Tokyo without leaving home. Take a spaceship to the moon and back on any afternoon. Yes, we, we can, can do, do it all from me to Z. Cause I got my computer and his Game Boy's even cuter. We can see it all on TV. On TV. On TV. On TV. Turn it off. I've had enough of these snot-nosed brats. <laughs> oh, what did she say? What did she say? She said she spotted rats. That's not what Test I said. Test one. Maybe we can eat it. That's quite enough. We should all go to bed. Can Grandpa Joe tell me one Wonka story? Just one? Please. All right, but just one. And no zombie worker stories. You need your sleep. You guys care if Pa tells Charlie a bedtime story? Guess not. I hope you clean up, Mrs. Bucket. So, Charlie, have I got a story for you. What's it about? Pirates? A giant peach? Zombie workers? I promised your mom no zombie stories. This one's about a little boy, and it just so happens to be this little boy's birthday. Yeah? And this little boy thought he opened up all his presents. But guess what? There was still one more. Charlie, look here. Wonka Nutty Crunch surprise! Shh! But where did you get it? I have my ways. Now don't forget, Charlie, there is still a teeny tiny million to one chance that this bar here could be hiding the fifth and last golden ticket. Now what's going on over there? Pop, what's that in your hands? Just a little something from me to Charlie on his birthday. Shh! Keep it quiet. I don't want to wake the others. What's going on? I, I smell chocolate. What are you up to, Joe? This is between me and the boy. Go on, Charlie. Open it. It's got a yellow part. I can't. I'm too nervous. You open it, Grandpa Joe. I'll tell you what. Let's do it together. Lifetime supply of chocolate. One, two, three. Nothing. A good thing. Really? Chocolate's very funning. It's, it's very funning. You're right. A lifetime supply of it. Why? You'd be the size of the dome on Capitol Hill. I wish I'd never heard of candy. Or Wonka. Cheer up, Charlie. Give me a smile What happened to the smile I used to know? Don't you know your grin has always been my sunshine? Let that sunshine show Come on, Charlie No need to frown Deep down you know tomorrow is your toy Get heavy, never pet a pat em. Up and at em, boy. Someday, sweet as a song, Charlie's lucky day will come along. Till that day you gotta hang in strong, Charlie. Up on top is right where you belong. Look up, Charlie, you'll see a star. Just follow it and keep your dreams in view. Pretty soon the skies are gonna clear up, Charlie. Cheer up, Charlie, do. Cheer up, Charlie. Come on, Charlie. Just be glad you
During the next two weeks, the weather turned as cold as Willy Wonka's Sub-Zero Choco Ice Cream Supreme. First came the snow, huge flakes drifting slowly down from a steel blue sky. Then came the wind. Inside the house, jets of freezing air came rushing in through the sides of the windows and under the doors, and there was no place they could go to escape them. The four old folks lay silent, huddled in their beds, just trying to keep the cold out of their bones. For the Bucket family, the excitement of the golden ticket was long forgotten. In fact, all they could think about was keeping warm and scraping together enough food to keep their hunger at bay for yet another long, cold day as winter tightened its grip. Mr. Bucket began to search for odd jobs like shoveling snow, while Charlie Bucket began the long uphill trek towards school. Charlie, Charlie, where's your coat? I haven't got a coat. Here, take my scarf. You'll freeze to death. Goodness. There you go. Thanks. You making your rounds? Oh, I was hoping to, but it's just too cold. I'm just trying to make it back to the shop before all the candy freezes. Say, help me pack up, would you? Sure. Ah, blast it. My fingers are so cold, I just can't feel them. Say, Charlie, could you grab that box of nut crunchies for me? I don't want them to freeze. Okay. Look at that! There's a coin lying right here in the snow. A silver dollar. I, I think you must have dropped this. Wow, a silver dollar. No, it's not mine. Why don't you take it home to your folks? You think I should? Maybe I should put up a notice. Charlie, that coin's probably been buried in the snow for weeks. Take it. And take this for being such a good boy. Really? Really. You look like you're starving. Mmm. It's so good. Perfect blend of Belgian dark chocolate and New World Life. With subtle overtones of Moroccan espresso. <sighs> Wonka's a genius. Thanks, I'd better get to school. Oh, do you think I could have just one more? And this time I'll pay for it. Sure, I'd give you another, but the boss is pretty strict about inventory. What'll it be, Charlie, my boy? Well, I think I'll share this one with my family. Grandpa Joe likes the Whipple Scrumptious Fudge Miller Delight, but Grandma Josephine likes the Nutterific. Then why don't you try the Whipple Scrumptious Nutterific Totally Twisted Combo Bar just out? Here you go. And I know you're going to share it and all, but why don't you take a taste too? You know, just to make sure you like it as well. On the one hand, you are just a bar of chocolate, no different from the rest. On the other hand, you're the superstar of chocolate, the golden key to Willy Wonka's treasure chest. Whichever you are, I'm hoping for the best. Think positive. Positive. Think positive. Look what happened. See what happened. That's what happens when you're thinking positive. Think 
positive. I never thought my life could be anything but catastrophe, but suddenly I begin to see a bit of good luck for me. Cause I've got a golden ticket. Woohoo! I got a golden twinkle in my eye. I never had a chance to shine, never a happy song to sing, but suddenly half the world is mine. What an amazing thing, cause I've got a golden ticket. I've got a golden sun up in the sky. Ladies and gentlemen, the last golden ticket has finally been found right here in the great city. What's your name, kid? Charlie, Charlie Bucket. Congratulations, Charlie Bucket. Your life is about to change. Day to be alive, now golden ticket number five is right here in the palm of your hand. For a day to celebrate, for a day to label great, when every dream that ever you plan comes into land. Don't it be the best? Grandpa Joe, Mom, Dad, I found it the last golden ticket. Don't tease us, Charlie. But I did. Look. By all that chocolate, Charlie, you did it! Holy, not horrific! Wait a minute, wait a minute! The tour is today. I can see them lining up in front of Wonka's factory. You better get moving. Come here, Charlie, let's wash your face. Shine your shoes. I yell, wearing clean underwear! I forget. I've been stuck in this bed for so long. Not you, Charlie! I'm not Charlie, he is! Charlie, who would you like to go with you on the tour? Oh, well, it'd be great if you could all come with me, but if I can only choose one, then it has to be Grandpa Joe. He's too old. No, no I'm not. Not you, Joe. Oh, he's too old. Who are you calling old? I've been waiting for this moment my entire life. Get me out of this bed, Charlie, and I'll race you to the factory. I never thought I'd see the day when I would face the world and say good morning. Look at the sun. I never thought that I would be a slap in the lap of luxury Cause I had said it couldn't be done But it can be done! Yes, it can be done! I never dreamed that I would climb over the moon in ecstasy But nevertheless it's there that I'm shortly about to be Cause I've got a golden ticket Got a golden ticket. Got a golden chance to make my way. And with the golden ticket, it's a golden day. Never ever dare to dream that there would be a golden time. A fading glorious golden blink. Our lives could become sublime. We've got a golden ticket. I've got a golden ticket. Got a golden chance to make our way. Ladies and gentlemen, we are live outside the gates of the Willy Wonka Chocolate Factory where history is about to be made. We've been told Mr. Willy Wonka himself will soon emerge from behind these mysterious gates. It seems something is happening. Yes, yes, here he comes now, the chocolate genius of the century, Mr. Willy Wonka. Come with me and you'll be in a world of pure imagination. Take a look. And you'll see into my imagination. You can dream any dream. You can save for every situation. Life involves a sensational sensation. If you want to view magic. Close your eyes and you will see one Wanna be a dreamer, be one Anytime you please and please save me one There is no place I know To compare with pure imagination Living 
Mr. Wonka, may I have a few words? Oh, certainly. Muckluck, Supercilious, and Piano Forte. Three of my very favorites. Thank you. Lovely speaking with you. Come forward, my little ones. Gather around. <laughs> Augustus Gloop, please step forward. He is my golden ticket, Mr. Wonka. Does this mean I can have something to eat? Oh. Ah! Ah! Ow! He has my gold. Poor baby, I'm grossly snuffle. My name is Veruca Salt. That's your misfortune, not mine. I always thought of Veruca was a wart, but you don't look like much of a wart at all. More of a mole, or perhaps a bunion. Ah! How you doing, Wonka? Salsa name and nuts the game. I'm totally nuts. Nuts for nuts, that is. An operation like this must go through a million nuts. Make that a million and one. Your golden ticket, please. Here's your silly ticket. Can I have back after the tour? Of course you can, my dear. Of course you can. Ugh. Violet Beauregard. I hear ya. Here's our ticket. Oh, and I'm happy to announce there will be no gum chewing allowed on the tour. But you make gum. <laughs> Mr. Wonka asked you to remove your gum, Violet, dear. Do we need to negotiate? <laughs> Sackle, babble, whatever. Mike TV. Mike TV and guests, your golden ticket, please. Hold your golden horses a minute, Professor. There's a Geico and a Nike commotion coming up. You don't have to get a Geico and a Nike back to back. I'm sorry, Mr. Wonka, here's your ticket. Scrumptious. Oh, and Mike, I'm happy to announce there will be no television reception inside the factory. None? None. Whatsoever. Chuck Bucket? It's Charlie, Mr. Wonka. Charlie Bucket. He is our golden ticket. Hello, Mr. Wonka. So you're Charlie Bucket. Odd coincidence, you finding your ticket at the very last second of the very last day. Now see here, Mr. Wonka. Our ticket is Pleased to any meet you people. too, Mr. Oh, you already know me, Mr. Wonka. Joe Bucket, I used to work for you. Congratulations. So did I. Well then, let's proceed. We begin with a contract. <laughs> Raise your right hand. I, insert your name. I, Charlie Sokin. Hereby swear not to touch, malign, assign. Touch, malign, assign. Clutch, tear, share, or wear. None such party, the first part. Under penalty, fitting of the grievance. Should the grievance occur, not valid in all states. See store for details, objects, and mirror may be closer than they appear. Do you so swear? We swear. Hey, not without my lawyer. Let me give him a ring. And no mobile phones. Sign or leave. Go ahead. I'll sign. Can I have to? Good. Now, are there any questions? Hey, Wonka. How long do you think it'll take? I've got a meeting in 20. Any questions from the children? Mr. Wonka, how long until we may have a snack? Augustus has low blood sugar. Mike, go pose with Mr. Wonka. Come on, go pose with Mr. Wonka. Oh, wait till I send this to Grandma. And <gasps> absolutely no photography what? of any kind. What? Mr. Wonka, just how many rooms has your factory? Ah, uh, good question, Augustus. In the Wonka Chocolate Factory, there are several thousand rooms. Ooh. I'll show you what some of them are. In this room here are the luminous lollies for eating in bed at night. And in that room there, the exploding sweets for when enemies start a fight. In this room here are the rock candy mines. They say that it's three miles deep. And in that room there are the marshmallow pillows to munch when you just can't sleep. Little rooms, room, high rooms, low rooms. 1,700 candy showrooms. Bathrooms, 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 And you'll find chocolate in almost all rooms. 
In this room here are the chocolate cows from which we get chocolate milk. And in that room there are the hot ice creams for a cold day smooth as silk. And in every room are chocolate miracles, streets beyond compare. Driving rivals to despair, you should see them tear their hair. And all because of this room here, and this room here, and this room here, this room here, and this room here. Oh yes, and that room there. Is the room getting smaller? But am I getting taller? Ah! Step center now, step center quickly. I'd hate to lose any of you so early in our journey. Will we crush? This is some sort of choke. Why yes, isn't everything? Now stand here in the center, quickly now. Now, now, now! If you want to view paradise, close your eyes and you will see one. Wanna be a dreamer, be one. Anytime you please, and please save me one. Please save me one. There! It's all candy, all edible. And the chocolate river, every last drop is the finest liquid chocolate known to man. How much chocolate is in that river? I'd say there's probably enough chocolate in there to fill every bathtub and every swimming pool in the country. I'd say five million gallons, wouldn't I? Why not? And then again, it could be five million and one. Hey Wonka, what are all those pipes for? Once the chocolate has been churned to creamy perfection, the pipes carry its yummy goodness to each and every room of my factory. Imagine, Augustus, hot and cold with chocolate! Herr Vanka, I want to taste some hot and cold running chocolate. No matter how tempting, and isn't it deliciously tempting, we must not, under any circumstances, touch the chocolate. Look over there! It's some sort of creature! <gasps> Freeze! Put your hands in the air where I can see them, punk! No need to worry. That, my friends, is an Oompa Loompa. Oompa what? A zombie worker! Not a zombie worker, a refugee. From where, Wonka? Refugee. All my workers are Oompa Loompas from Loompa Land. Now see here, Wonka, I am a geography teacher. Then you and should know is... all about Loompa Land with its thick jungles infested with horn swagglers and snozzy wanglers and all those wicked old wangdoodles. Wangdoodles? There's no such thing. Oh, there certainly are, my dear. And wouldn't a wangdoodle just love to sink its super sharp, vicious little fangs into you? Augustus, didn't I say quite recently that my super special chocolate is not to be touched by human hands, especially yours? Too late. Great. He's gonna give his cold to millions of people. Oh. It's so good. I think I'm going to be chocolate drunken. Not big enough, it seems. Not even I have need for a gloop sized pipe. Oh my, oh my god, he looks like he's stuck. Get he him. is stuck in Charlie. Seems we've had a slight early setback and lost a big, fat, greedy child in the Chocolate River. You'll be mad like a marshmallow! Impossible! That pipe goes nowhere near the marshmallow room. It leads to the strawberry dipping room. Strawberry dipping room? Where he will be heated to precisely 88 degrees Fahrenheit. Where's that Celsius? I do get the two mixed up so often, sometimes with tragic consequences. In any case, somebody will accompany Miss Gloop to the strawberry dipping room, and when you'll get there, you'll take a long, sharp stick and begin to poke around in the big chocolate mixing barrel. There's a pretty good chance you'll find him there, but hurry. 
If you leave him too long, he's sure to be poured into the fudge boiler. And wouldn't that be a tragedy? Could damage the machinery. Well, the Augustus would be damaged too! Frog Loop, Augustus was damaged a long time ago. <gasps> the rest of the tragedy, as far as I'm concerned, would be the wasted chocolate. Good day, Mrs. Gloop, and good luck. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, please follow closely as we continue our tour. Okay, stay behind me. Part of our tour by boat. Step up and step in, watch your step. Violet, do not lick the boat. You only make the ship sticky. Excuse me, Mr. Wonka. I just love your hat. It really brings out your eyes, but of course you would have great taste. You know, I would simply adore a pink candy boat. And maybe one of those sweet little Oompa Loompas to drive it for okay, me. Okay, okay. I know when it's time to bring out the old checkbook. Name your price, Wonka. And don't take me on too much of a boat ride, huh? <laughs> Get it? A little joke there. You may need my nuts one day. A bad parent says what? What? I said. A bad parent says what? What? <laughs> exactly. Hey, Wonka, where the heck are you taking us? There's no knowing where we're going. There's no earthly way to know. So we're simply to and froing, slowly getting go to the south the wind is blowing to the north there may be snow to the west the moon is glowing to the east a cock may grow since we show no signs of slowing someone must know where we are but no destination showing, so it's all a bit bizarre. Though our mood is easy going, like a game of tic-tac-toe, we must cease this dilly-dallying, shilly-shallying to and fro. It's no mystery where we're going, unlike Edgar Allan Poe. Quite apart from our not knowing, it's the only place to go. And here we are in the inventing room. Ooh. Oh, look at that. This room is the nerve center of my entire factory. Some of my most secret inventions are cooking and simmering in here.
<gasps> Ta-da! The everlasting gourmet gobstopper. It looks like gum. That's because it is gum. Gum. The most dazzling gum in the world. Gum? Oh, no, 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 no. A full three-course meal without any of those nasty calories. Gum. Unfortunately, it's not been perfected, so we must not chew it. Gum. I've only had one dream in life, there's very little to it. To own a stick of lifelong gum and all lifelong to chew it. I chew it all through childhood, I'll chew it when I wed. If I survive to 95, I'll chew it till I'm dead. But this gum here is much better than that one. This gum here is a three-course dinner, pea soup, roast beef, and blueberry ice cream. Blueberry is the nicest ice cream. You may feel fat, but in fact you're thinner, even after a three-course dinner. That gum's so mad! Mmm, <gasps> it's delicious! It really tastes like pea soup! Mmm, here comes roast beef. Fantastic! So tender and juicy. But the blueberry mm. ice cream... I'll best to die! That's what I'm worried about. The dye. Violet, you're so busted. That gum is gonna do it. Her candy fame's gone down the drain. I told her not to chew it. Too late, really nothing to it, cause I know just how to chew it. There is no need to poo-poo it. All I have to do is do it. Violet, it's so bad for you. Violet, do your turn and blue. Violet, what you gonna do? Just stand there singing, am I blue? Yes, yes he's turning blue, blue, it's true. Oh, Violet, you are not my right clue. How lousy run gum, I knew it. Blueberry blue, it's bad. children gone. How delightful. Three good little children left. All right. Or wrong. We'll see. Mr. Wonka, will Violet ever be all right? Or will she always be a blueberry? Very probably. At least, I hope so. It's a pity, really. She showed so much promise as a gum prodigy. Anyway, come along. We have so much sea to more. Stop. Reverse that. Ah, I quite forgot about this room. It's the fizzy lifting drink room. Bubbles? Do they taste like candy? Wonka, sweetie, I want bubbles that taste like candy. Actually, they taste like soap for children with dirty mouths. It's what the bubbles do that's remarkable. What do they do, Wonka? One taste of my fizzy lifting drink and you will float on air. Float on air? Whoa. Unfortunately, my legal advisors have prohibited our taking, and even the tiniest taste. Something to do with air traffic control. In any case, I have more exciting things to show you. Come along.
Where's Mr. Wonka and the kids? They've left us behind. Grandpa Joe, what's that? Try it. Who's there? Hello? Try it. Try it. Should we? I suppose one tiny taste wouldn't do any harm. Cocoa beans contain a variety of chemicals, the primary psychoactives being caffeine and theobromine. Now right this way and... Charlie, do stay with the group. We wouldn't want you to float away now, would we? Bad nut. And now we have Go the nut that. room. Mr. Wonka, are those squirrels? Thus explaining their enormous Bad. similarity to squirrels. These squirrels can remove a walnut from its shell in one piece and at the same time sort the good nuts from the bad nuts. They're so adorable! Here, squirrely, squirrely, squirrely. Veruca, whatever you do, do not disturb the squirrels. Good nut. You see here, Wonka, I want a squirrel. Of course you do. And what I want, I get. All right, checkbook's ready. I want a squirrel and an Oompa Loompa. I want a squirrel and an Oompa Loompa and a pink candy boat. And while we're at it, I want to feast. I want to bean feast. Cream buns and donuts and fruitcake with no nuts. So good you could go nuts. Give it to me. Now I want to ball. I want a party. Pink macaroons and a million balloons and performing baboons and give it to me now. I want a party with rooms full of laughter. I want a ton of ice cream. And if I don't get the things I am after, I'm gonna scream. <laughs> I want the whole works. 
presents and prizes and sweets and surprises in all shapes and sizes. And now. To ride in a fine crystal carriage I want each day to be spring And when the time comes to think about marriage I want a king She wants to stop Those two were nuts. And I'm afraid they're about to be roasted. Why? Where does that shoe lead to? That particular shoe leads to the garbage incinerator. <gasps> but don't worry, there's a chance it won't be lit today. A chance? Well, you see, typically, it's only lit every other day. I can't remember if today's a burn day or not. Hmm. Well, I guess we'll see. It's a pity, really. She was so... So bossy, selfish, and uneducated would have made a wonderful politician. <laughs> and anyway, come along, onward and upward, backward and forward, right this way. I will be with you in just one moment. Right now, everyone must wear their protective gear. Good. Please place the goggles over your eyes. Fantastic. And now we have the Choco Vision Room. What is this place? Some sort of television studio? Of course, for making walk commercials. <gasps> Wrong. You are familiar with how television works. Yeah, big deal. What's this thing do? I'm sorry, I'm a bit deaf in that ear. I said, what's this thing do? I'm sorry, I'm a bit deaf in that ear as well. What's the loompy doompy doing? Well, you see, television gave me a wonderful idea. If you could send a picture using television, why not a candy bar? That's impossible! Oh, it's very possible. Imagine you're sitting at home watching TV, and suddenly a commercial comes on. Try a Wonka bar, try it now, and poof! There it is. Just one push of that button right there. But it's not been properly tested, so we must not Hey! It. 
Watch me. Mike. I'm going to be on TV. Oh, oh no, don't. <gasps> He's gone. Oh, no. <gasps> oh, I do hope some part of him's not left behind. We've Mike. never transmitted a person before. Look, something's happening. <gasps> no. <gasps> Dude, Mike. look at me. I'm the first person ever to be sent by television. Mike, I told you not to touch. That was your first mistake, fool. I want to do it again and again. Put me down, put me down. I want to be on TV. He, he's perfectly unharmed. Unharmed? He's six inches tall! Well, yes, that could be a problem. But you see, young boys can be very springy and stretchy. Oh, no. The taffy pulling machine, that ought to do it. How far do you think he'll stretch? Who knows? Could be miles. Thank you both very much. I'm sure you can find your own way out. You mean, that's it? What about Charlie's lifetime supply of chocolate? Ah, yes, that. A lifetime supply of chocolate. Each child will receive their chocolate, but other than that, the day has been a complete waste of time and chocolate. Good day, Charlie Bucket, and goodbye. Um. Goodbye, Mr. Wonka. This is unbelievable we're treating, being treated this way. We did nothing. We'll get back at him. He hasn't heard uh, the last of us. Just a moment. Uh, Mr. Wonka, I don't deserve a lifetime supply of chocolate. I, I tasted the fizzy lifting drink, and I broke the rules, and I'm very sorry. But thank you for a wonderful day and the most wonderful tour of your factory. It was better than Christmas. Bless you, Charlie. You did it! You did it! Did what, Mr. Wonka? See here, Mr. Wonka. It wasn't Charlie's fault. It was mine. I was the one who suggested we taste the fizzy lifting drink. So you are both to blame, but I haven't got time for that now. I created this entire competition with just one purpose in mind. To find the next person to make new candy dreams come true. I don't understand. This whole thing was a test of character, Charlie. I carefully selected the rooms that would tempt each of our golden ticket winners. You, Charlie, did something quite remarkable. You gave in to temptation. You were smart enough not to get caught, and yet you admitted your guilt. Now come along, pick up the pace. We've got a lot of planning to do. Does that mean we're in trouble, Mr. Wonka? I'm not, but you could be. Time will tell. It always seems to be just a matter of time till we find ourselves in some good old-fashioned Life-threatening trouble. Now here we are. Press the button, Charlie. This one? No, not that one. That one. Where are you taking us, Wonka? I thought this tour was over. Oh, that tour was pure theater. Nothing but cotton candy and treacle designed to test each candidate. Our tour is just beginning. Now hold on tight, Charlie, because we're going up and out.
up and out. Up and out. Hold on tight. This is it. Here we go. time by flying it's so inviting exciting and quite a defying bumping your head on the ceiling of heaven above and we now know why there is no feeling that's quite like the feeling of flying bumping your head on the ceiling of heaven above Fantastic! Unbelievable! Oh, and look over there! There are all the other kids just leaving! They look like they're trying to get our attention! Well, let's just swoop down and see if we can hear what they have to say. Wonka, what are all those trucks doing? Delivering their booby prizes. What are the booby prizes? Their lifetime supply of chocolate. If that's the booby prize, what's the real prize? Charlie, how much do you love my factory? I think it's the most wonderful and incredible and exciting place in the whole wide world. I'm pleased to hear you say that, young Charlie Bucket, because from this moment on, it's yours. I'd love to, Mr. Wonka, but, but I can't leave my mom and dad and Grandma Josephine. You don't have to. Look, it's all been taken care of. Mom, Dad, Grandma, and Grandpa! What does this mean, Mr. Wonka? It means your family can live here at the factory with you. Now what do you say, Charlie? I say... Yes, Mr. Wonka! I would truly, positively, absolutely love to! Now Charlie makes everything he bakes Satisfying and delicious Talk about your childhood wishes We will help you eat the dishes Who can take the sunrise? Who can take the sunrise? Sprinkle it with dew Sprinkle it with dew Cover it in chocolate and a miracle or two Our Charlie can! Oh, Charlie can. I know that he can. We know that he can. We I know, know that he can. Cause he mixes it with love and makes the world taste good. And the world tastes good. Cause the candy man thinks it should. <laughs>
I, that, that caught me by surprise. Oh my gosh, thank you. I've never done that. All right, here we go. I feel like this doesn't come together. It takes an army of Oompa Loompas <laughs> to get this right um, and to do the job and to get the job done. My deep thanks to the following people. My husband, who hasn't had a home-cooked meal in two months. <laughs> um, uh, Mr. Jose Bass and the orchestra kids, thank you very much. Uh, to the, my assistant directors, Devin Rivers and John Funchen. My costume, my costume queens and their entire team, uh, Lindsay Herring and Christina DeBrull. Food, tickets, meals, marketing, prop, blah, 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 blah. Uh, team leaders, Katie Norman, Cynthia DeVidio, and Tempe Wilkinson. Set builder, Caleb Thomas Wowzers. He's 19 years old and he built this set for me. Um, with um, some extra helping hand of John Cappers and Mike Al uh, Mark Appleton. The entire fine arts department, um, Jose Pass, Marcus Mims, Maren Steger, Hannah Dillard, and Lisa McConnell helping with all of the, all of the art stuff. Tech crew, Jane Smith, Hannah Diller, my daughter, Katie Foltz, and led by the incredible Ian Johnson. Ian Johnson, without you. Yeah. Ian Johnson, without you, this, this couldn't have happened. He did, like, all the things. We love you, Mr. Johnson. Yes, we do. The administration of South Lake, Dr. Matt Curlin, Mrs. Macklin, Mrs. Thomas, and Dr. Apgar, and Brooke Hondros for coming in on the clutch with all the um, logo stuff and everything that we needed. People, this is what the body of Christ looks like. Different parts of the body working together to create art, and this was stunning. I'm so beyond proud of you. Fantastic job. We have three seniors in this show, three seniors in this show. Um, I'm not, I, uh, uh, names, uh, Laura Smith and Rute Strode. Where are you, Rute? Right behind her over there. Um, and I will recognize those two in choir uh, at the spring concert, but we also have one more, Jackson. So I need to, you to come up here. Um, Jackson came uh, to the theater department just last year. He was slightly uh, in our Peter Pan production, and he was shy and nervous and very uh, uncomfortable, but willing to take a risk. And I think Peter Pan changed your life. Yes. <laughs> um, and you came into this show eons more confident, and he... Uh, he just stepped in and did the things. If something was needed on set, he just did it. Um, I need, I'm on it. Can you help? I'm on it. He was just always, always there. Um, I need to give you a blessing. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May his face shine upon you. And may he give you his great peace. Okay, um, we are now done, officially done with this show. Uh, cannot, oh, we are not officially done. <laughs> Mr. Der Johnson. Name is Gloop. <laughs> Mr. Johnson, can you get my mic? Okay, perfect. <laughs> Hi, guys. <laughs> so um, every year at the last show, we like to get the directors a gift. So um, Rute has yours, and those are your flowers. Thank you. Oh, they're beautiful. Thank you. <laughs> and Thank you then so much. Mrs. Rivers. Miss Rivers, so your flowers and your cards. Um, we just want to say thank you to you guys because you have done so much for this whole team of people, this whole family, um, and we're just so grateful for you guys. And I know we're leaving you, but um, we'll come back, <laughs> so it's gonna be okay. But we just want to say we love you so much. And
All right, we are now, now officially done? Yeah. Okay, now we're officially done. Um, here's what we're going to do. We're gonna let these fine actors greet you, meet you and greet you. We'd love to have them line up um, in the hallway. If you give them just a second, y'all, can you scooch down and go line up in the hallway? All right, and then I have to give them only 15 minutes because after that, we have got to turn this fantastic theater back into a sanctuary. So y'all have 15 minutes to meet and greet, and then you have to help. Uh, well, you don't have to help. Unless you're a parent, you do need to help. Um, <laughs> transform all of, of this. So thank you very much. God bless you. Have a wonderful night.